It's me against them. I know you're probably asking, who is them? It's the Young Guns. Well, I challenged three of the best teenage anglers that I know into a shootout style tournament on my home lake, Lake Hartwell. To be clear now, this is not gonna be your typical tournament. There's a few special rules that I put in place for this teen shootout. All right, guys, we are here at Lake Hartwell, my favorite lake in the whole world. We're gonna have something special for you today. This is what we're gonna call the Straight Up Fishing Teen Shootout. The reason I'm calling it a teen shootout is because I got some of the best fishermen, the best young fishermen, the new generation fishing against me today. I got Bradford here, I've got Hogan, and I got Trace. We're all gonna have a shootout, and they're gonna try to beat me today. It's not gonna be your normal tournament. I got a box here. This is yours, Hogan, all right? Everybody's got the exact same stuff, okay? Y'all ready to look into this? We got some special rules. You have to use the tackle that's in this box. You got it? You got to use the tackles in this box. Number two, we're only going to fish from that bridge right there to the next bridge. We've got a condensed section of lake that we're going to fish. You can only use this box of tackle. Let's go take a look at the tackle, guys, and see what we got in here. We got to the ramp and Brian explained to us that uh, we could only fish one area of the lake and only the baits in the box. I got a little nervous, but once I saw that we had a shaky head and a jerk bait, that calmed me down a little bit because I know uh, you can catch them on that. It did get a little bit worrisome when we didn't have any live scope because uh, I really like the live scope with a jerk bait. Got us a spinner bait. That could be really good if we can find some stained water, fishing around some docks on way down, stuff like that. Uh, got the Streaks 375, that could be good uh, on a Tamiki rig or drop shot potentially if the fish are still deep. And uh, also got some stuff to put on a shaky head, that could be really good for any spawning fish around docks, clay banks, and uh, just something to get a bite when you need it. When he gave us the tackle box, I was a little relieved because pretty much everything I had planned was in there, but the twist was he took away all of our electronics except the one at the back of the boat. I was going to use it for jerkbait trying to find some schooling fish, but now he took it away. I knew I couldn't, so I was just going to have to go trust the process and go on points. He even limited us down to a certain spot on the lake, and I knew that I was going to struggle, and I had to really bring my A game and try and find good points and places to fish. We got a good chatterbait. Hopefully, maybe I can throw that up shallow in some stained water. Got a spinnerbait, maybe use that in some same water. Maybe the water's a little bit more stained back past that bridge. There it is over here. If I can find some fish on beds, maybe toss that up there, see if I can get them to get mad and bite it. I see what I wanted. Got some shaky heads, I love shaky heads. Got some good worms to throw on shaky heads. And then in here, if we can find some fish deep, or schooling fish, got a rattle trap. Fish shallow, got some frogs. And then we got a pencil popper, and then we got jerk baits, my favorite. Personally, I love to throw crankbaits and shaky heads. Those are one of my two confidence baits. When I opened up that mystery tackle box and I saw that I had two different options of crankbaits, I was stoked. And when I saw that they had the SMH jig heads and the SMH worms, I really thought I was going to have a good day. Oh my gosh, nice. The Chatterbait Mini Max, I've caught so many fish on that. And then the shaky heads are my go-to this time of year. Anywhere I go to. With the trick ones, the SMH Z-Man baits. Those are awesome. For whatever reason, I decided to leave my box on the front deck of my boat. And as I'm driving down the lake to my first spot, I saw my Carl's box go right by me. The best I can do is just try to salvage as much of this tackle as possible before it hits the bottom of the lake and just get through the day of fishing. Well, I did salvage some things. At least I do have my, I got my Magic Man, I got my Gordita. Oh God, I'm still throwing stuff in the lake. Got my Magic Man, I got my Gordita. These boys are going to whoop my butt today. I think I'm going to try and focus on points 
mainly rocky points because right now the herring are spawning and eating like that fish. So I'm gonna try and focus on mainly moving baits, like maybe a rattle trap, crankbait, or even a jerk bait. I think the jerk bait is gonna work pretty good. Today I'm really expecting um, to be able to catch some fish on a shaky head, um, around some clay banks and stuff with a little bit of rock mixed in. Um, a little bit flatter than usual because the fish should be pretty shallow and spawning. I also want to start uh, catching some fish on a jerk bait this morning. The bite should be uh, getting good now with the herring spawn and everything coming up. Today I'm going to really try to focus on fishing docks, fishing that shade line with the SMH shaky head and SMH uh, worm. And that has, I've caught a lot of fish doing this and I feel really confident in flipping those by the docks and fishing the shade lines and try to catch our five keepers and see if we can't catch a big one. The thing about it is I'm watching the conditions even though now I'm limited to my baits that I can use. With it being cloudy, overcast, chance of rain, a little bit of wind, I feel like today is a better day for fishing reaction baits. I noticed we had 13 fish in local special. I noticed that we had a few crank baits. I noticed that we also had a couple really nice walking topwater baits. I figured that if I started out with those, maybe I could locate a group of fish and get a fast start to the day. And as I'm getting into it, I'm noticing that that's not really working as I planned. Uh-oh, I'm going on an hour. I hit a couple little spots. Now, I haven't moved that much, but I'm going about an hour and I ain't had a bite. As we say in South Carolina, I ain't had a bite. Nothing yet. <laughs> I'm ready to get on it because I, I know I know these little suckers, they, they've been out here practicing too. Bush your head to the fat meat. The first time I met Brian was um, actually at Grady's Outdoors and, and uh, there was a casting competition and uh, I casted 50 yards when I was about eight years old. He came over and started talking to me and uh, he was doing guide trips at the time and I went out on a guide trip with him and uh, we've kind of always been talking ever since. Uh, today we started out fishing some smaller points with a jerk bait that we got in our mystery tackle box. Um, was able to catch a few pretty quick like that this morning and uh, then after that I think they've started to move away from that and now I'm throwing a shaky head on clay banks and uh, starting to catch a few like that so hopefully we can keep doing this and upgrade a few times. Finally got a bite dude. He's a itty bitty. <laughs> He's like, ooh, you so little. But guess what I gotta do? It's not going like playing. Look at him. He just he's just fertilizing. We gotta put him in the box because I don't I don't have I have not had a bite. It's the first bite I had all day. I may, I was I was planning just because it's cloudy, I was planning to kind of go around reaction fishing. Fishing the top water, fishing the jerk bait. I may start fishing some of these like dark spots because even though it's cloudy, it's very calm today. And when it's calm, jerk baits, top water baits aren't typically the best unless it's just one of those days where, where they're just really eating. Now it's cloudy, not only is it cloudy, it's kind of cool. It's not that warm today. Probably in the 50s. So uh, where it's been in the 80s might make a difference. I met Brian at uh, the Straight Up Fishing School. I did the online tournaments and I qualified for the championship and I actually won the championship. I'm hoping I can ride that momentum from me winning in January into this tournament and get the win. Fish on. That's a nice run. Oh yeah, that's a really nice spot of bass. That's a really nice one. This guy. 
Come on. Come on, buddy. Yes! A stinking goal. That's like a nice, that's a really nice one. That's about a pound and a half, probably. Spotted bass are one of my favorite. They're so fun to catch. A little better one. Still small. You gotta get started somewhere though, you know? It'll help us get. Yeah. Let's get him in the boat. I just tied on the little shaky head that Carl's gave us to hurry up and get some fish in the boat. Maybe we'll sight fish later. We'll put him in the small side. I'm gonna keep going down through here. It's like a little sandy bank. And you can see these little dark spots, light spots. You can see where fish are spawning through here. The good thing about today is the fish are in all stages of the spawn. Since February, we've had spawning fish. So for like two months now, spawning fish, pre-spawn fish, post-spawn fish. There's gonna be like a lot of different options. I'm gonna try to catch a fish on each option today. Originally when I met Brian, the first ever time, I was at the Bassmaster Classic and I went into the Guggen Squad booth and I went up and we just talked for a little bit and then I posted on Instagram after a tournament of me catching a fish. We tagged him in it, he responded to it and then he asked if I would like to come here and I was like, I'm gonna take the opportunity because it's a great opportunity for me and I thought I was gonna have a lot of fun. Oh, you see that? They're chasing right there. What? <laughs> That's all he's got now. He's very big, but it's big. There we go. That's a largey. Saw him chase him. Came up, threw the top water out. He hit it like four different times. Finally, I let it sit. He just decided to eat it. Toss him in that lava well. I'm gonna get a good close up of him. Oh man. I, here, you better on. get back can to I work. Get, here, can you throw him in the oh, lava yeah. well? Where's the live wheel? Right, it's those two little parts right at the back. Okay. Got another one. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is good work. Oh, he ain't terrible. Better than that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one right there. Yes, sir. That ain't a bad one right there. Take that one any day. Three and a half, four pounder. There we go. That ain't a bad fish right there. Got some good action on this point. Got them both. Right, two casts in a row. Lake Hartwell has a lot of different options you can fish. You can fish shallow, you can fish deep, you can fish laydowns, you can fish anything. They have all types of offshore structure. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite lakes, and hopefully we can catch four more to get in the bag. Got another one. Got one. Let's go! Fish number two. Another little spotted bass. This time on their red crankbait. I'm feeling amazing right now. That's fish number two in the box. So hopefully we can catch three more and get a full bag. I think for a tournament scenario to get uh, lots of bites and just a better bite, uh, have to go with just a half ounce jig to fish shallow, deep, 
swim it. You can make it, I mean, throw a white one for a shad, throw a brown one for a craw or a bluegill. I think a jig would probably be my go-to in a tournament. There's a fish right there. Feels like a good one too. Unless he's hooked funny. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, I think that one's gonna help me, maybe. No, he's pulling hard. Oh, he's not that big. All right. Well, got us another one. He might help us. Gonna be really close. Yeah, he's bigger. I'm gonna put him on the beam just to make sure. But I think he's bigger. Oh yeah, he helps. Definitely helps. There we go. Got us another upgrade. Throwing him back. Not a bad fish to be thrown back. As I'm getting into this, hour and a half, two hours into the day, I really hadn't had many bites. So I'm starting to get a little concerned because typically this time of the year, the fish are biting. If you're fishing on places they're supposed to be, there's gonna be a fish there. Pretty good large mouth actually. That's a small mouth, uh, spotted bass. Here we go, 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 here we go. It's a post-spawn fish. And tell you why, why I can tell fish are in post-spawn. You see his dorsal fins, pectoral fins are all kind of beat up. So when those fish, they rub their bellies on the bottom trying to fan out of bed. All that stuff gets raw. All right, we got three in the box. This is what we're working against. We may have a weather delay today because we've got some gnarly, storm's coming. It looks pretty bad looking at the radar, so I've got to do my best. I've kind of resorted to just getting the limit instead of thinking I can just go out here and catch a bunch of fish real fast or a bunch of good ones. If I can get a limit before that storm comes, because who knows what happens after the storm. It could get windy, could get bright and sunny. Uh, it'll definitely be different after this blows through, so I want to make sure I got five before this goes through. I don't know what them boys are doing. They might already, they might already have a couple of three or four or five pounders. I just got to do, I got to play at my pace right now. I'm super proud to have these kids in my circle. They're awesome to work with. They give me energy. They come to the boat ramp ready to fish. They come, they leave ready to come back and fish again. I'm, I'm just proud of the way they approach the sport. Not so much their fish catches. I've seen a lot of fish catches in my lifetime, but I've only seen a few select times where I've seen people work at the sport, they're hungry to learn, and they're hungry to find out new ways to catch fish. Each one of these boys has shown me that, and that makes me most proud of them. Yeah, you know, after I fished uh, a few points in a shoal um, with the jerk bait, um, I got a few keepers and stuff, and uh, it just kind of started to slow down. The wind wasn't blowing as bad, so, uh, I went to uh, some clay banks with a shaky head. That's just where the spots tend to spawn this time of the year. So I uh, started throwing that shaky head and uh, got bit pretty fast. So uh, hopefully it can keep going. Feels like a better one right there. Could just be a little spot though. No, he's not a bad one. Pretty good one there, again on the shaky head, on a little clay point. Definitely gonna cull for us this time. Give us maybe a pound, for sure about three quarters of a pound. Pretty good upgrade. Put him back, put him on the good side, and get back to work. My mindset for going in today, I was very uncertain, but fairly confident at the same time. 
I never had the chance to go pre-fish or get any spots located. And I've only fished Lake Hartwell one other time. And from that one other time, I was able to find a couple spots that panned out for me. This is like the biggest one of the day. That's a nice spotted bass. Oh my gosh. That's close to three. That's about two and a half. Let's stink and go. Let's go. On the shaky head. That's a freaking tank, my dude. All right, so we got three in the box. We got um, a couple more hours. So I'm just gonna try to put my head down and grind, try to get two more keepers. Um, I think I might go spotted bass fishing again just to get two more, try to get two more, and then the rest of the day, just try to get some big largemouth. So as the day went on, uh, I started figuring out the pattern and I started realizing that not having the electronics probably helped me because if I had the electronics, I would have been distracted by live scope trying to chase all these fish that aren't going to eat and I would just would have been all over the place and I wouldn't have committed to play banks with points. It's raining, weather hasn't changed, they should still be off point. They're not going to, they shouldn't move deep today because it's cloudy. So, oh I got one. Yeah. I don't know if it's big, but I do have one. Could be a striper. Hold on. Get up here. <clears throat> Caught him on the jerk way right off point. I think we're establishing a pattern now. Fish just came up schooling. That's not a place you would expect for him to come up schooling, is what's weird. This is what I love about this lake. Right now, this fish in all three stages of the spawn. There he is. I'm obviously catching some off beds, plucking them off the ones that I actually see. I know are spawning. There's also some fish that have not spawned yet, and the perfect way to catch them is under floating docks, under houseboats, or anything that creates some type of shade. So I saw some houseboats. I pull out that local special, the deep model, you know the loco special, that's him. That's him. That's the one that I use. That's the one that I catch fish on. There he is. That's a good one too, bro. Freaking good one. Dude, that's a freaking good one. <laughs> oh, loco special. Oh, yeah. Let me see. He got hooks all different types of ways in his mouth. Mm hmm. A couple of larger mouths like that will go a long way today. <laughs> we might start that. I caught that fish suspended on one of these boats. Shall we call again? Shall we call again? How about that for an upgrade? <laughs> uh, Whopper. Maybe not a Whopper. A double cheeseburger, chicken nugget. <laughs> I wish I had my graph. I could probably go find them. <laughs> oh, oh, good dude. Oh, come on, please stay on. There we go. Yes, sir. Caught us one that came up on some bait. Was able to catch one on the top water. This little point they happened to come up schooling and uh, was able to throw the pencil popper we got in our box um, at that one. He blew up on it. We we're able to capitalize on the bite. So that one's going to help us a good bit. Throw him back. Yeah, I really like to have a solid amount of rods on the deck just for. Uh, any situation when it presents itself. I mean, if I didn't have that bait tied on, then I might not have caught that fish. So it's always good to be prepared for any situation. Hello? Hey. Hey, 
Yeah, I got five, and I I just got done calling. I called one. I, dude, I've been burning this jerk bait all day. It's been put to work. Yeah, I ain't put the jerk. Oh, I got another one. <laughs> Hold up, I got another one. A large mouth? What is that? Large. That'll coal. That one will coal. Probably about a pound coal. Maybe a half a pound coal. I don't know. I'm going to take this. This is the goat. The Z Man goat. I was fishing my SMH worm, but the fish just, he bit it a couple times, but he didn't seem like he was really that pissed off about it and sometimes going with a little bit bigger bait when you're sight fishing or fishing one that's on a nest a little bit bigger bait can can get the fish more agitated it's not always the case but every once in a while there'll be one if you just can't get his can't seem to get him riled up can't seem to get his attention good i'll go with a little bit bigger bulkier bait on texas rig that can be a swim bait i'm just going to throw it on texas rig that's a four out Spear point, straight shank hook, quarter ounce sinker, 15 pound test diamond fluorocarbon. Put that on Mark Daniels flipping stick. Let's see if we can get him agitated now. Oh yeah, I still see him, he's still there. Let's make a couple good pitches in here. Oh, he's easing up on it. Oh God, he turned his, turned his nose. Look at him, he's turned his nose up on it. Sometimes in tournaments I'll do this. I'm gonna turn my live wheels off just for a second. I'm gonna stop my sonar just for a second. Get the boat as quiet as possible. I'm a little closer than I prefer to be, but I don't wanna move, because if I move, I'm just gonna make more noise. So I'm just gonna try to make my boat as silent as possible. Turn my sonar off, turn my aerators off just for a second. Think about it, if you do that, you gotta remember to turn them back on. All right, here we go. Oh, God, dude, he turns around so fast, but just doesn't actually get it in his mouth. Oh. <laughs> Are y'all as nervous as I am? Four boat tournament in my hands. I had sweaty palms just there. Got it, got it, got it. Ah, <laughs> dude, that was freaking cool. That was cool. That was so cool. I just swapped it up a little bit. I was throwing the SMH worm, great bait to throw for spawning fish, but sometimes it's just not big enough to intimidate him. Yo. Yo, somebody told me you got a big one. Maybe. It, I hope it's bigger than eight. Oh yeah, please, like you got an eight. Dude, I just caught one off of bed, dude, I think. Dude, this could be the one. Is, is, um, is the one you caught bigger than eight? I can't disclose information to anybody. I think I got one that's pushing eight and one that's almost three and three quarters, maybe four. Uh-huh. So as the day went on, I kind of rotated points and I rotated to that point that was right before the second bridge and I make one cast and I get a hit. So he's running towards me, and I don't think he's very big until he jumps. And right as he jumped, I saw the size of the fish, and I knew that was the one, that was the kicker fish that I needed to help me win this tournament. Nice fish right there. Hey, this is a surprise one. I ain't telling Brian I caught this one. Put some pressure on him. Going into our four boat weigh-in, I wasn't really that confident. 
I had a good day. I caught a lot of fish. I was still feeling like him, but there's always that chance of somebody finding out that one little detail that changes the entire day. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Everybody got their five biggest fish. We're gonna do it club style. We got one way in bag. We'll put them in the bag, put them on the scale, read out the weight, heaviest weight wins. Simple as that. That's good enough? All right, we'll start off with, uh, we'll start off with you, Brad. I'll just jump over there with you. Number two. Number three. Three, that's it? That's okay, all right. All right, I'm gonna let you look at it. Here we go. You got three for, three for five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. One thing I am proud of is that I fished hard the whole day. I grinded through everything, and I was still able to weigh in three fish. All right, we got Hogan. What you got? What you got? Don't don't be pulling out nothing too crazy now. I like. Let's see him. Okay. Okay. All right. That's one. Oh no. <laughs> That's two solids. Yep. Oh no. Is that a small side or a big side first? Small side. You said that's a small side. All right. Oh man. <laughs> it's number three. Yep. Number four, another good one. All spots. Huh? One large one. Well, one large one? Oh. <laughs> Ew, old meat patty. All right, what you think you got? Uh, I'm going to say 1141. 1457. 1457. Golly. I ain't got no 1457. All right, good job, my man. 1457 is catching. Yeah, it was definitely a pretty fun morning. I got to catch a lot of fish uh, pretty fast, and I think I was the first one to catch my five fish limit, but uh, man, it was just a struggle for me to, to catch that really big one that I needed to potentially win. And uh, I went shallow and tried to find a big one on bed and uh, went back out uh, to the clay with a shaky head, fished some points with a jerk bait, but I just never did find that four plus pounder that I needed. I see that's a two, 11. I don't discriminate. I got large mouth and spotted bass. That's the small size on trouble. Let's see. Uh-oh. Another good one? I don't know how much that one weighs. How many is that? How many are we allowed to have? Seven? Seven fish? Okay. All right. Two-hander. <laughs> <laughs> That's my two-hander. Dang. 14. 74. <laughs> what, what was yours? Uh, 1457. 1457. All right, we got one more. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, he said, <laughs> oh, hey, he said he got it. We didn't put him in the bag yet. No, no, I don't know about that. He said, oh, we, we, I, I got it. I got it. Man, let me get over there with the bag first. Ah, yeah, I got it, I got it, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see him, old boy. This guy been talking junk all day. Call me, what you got, what you got? I got a biggest. That's your biggest? He's been calling me all day. I got him, I got him, Brian, I got him. I, got him. I hope he catches me. You're supposed to be a pro, I got him, I got him, I got him. I got him, you, you old. This He's making fun of my gray hair. He's still grabbing with one hand, though. Let's see. Oh, little meat pie, a little duggy. Oh, that's a real fat one for real. Why are you hiding the live well? I'm gonna see the fish. Oh, we're gonna see. Whoa! Oh my God! How much you think that one weighs? 
Six. It's going. Hey, it's a big one. What? All right. What do you think you got? Seventeen. Seventeen. I'm gonna say. I say you got seventeen twenty-two. Seventeen. Seventeen twelve. Seventeen twelve. <laughs> I was pretty close. Good job, my man. All right, now. We gotta weigh that big one. You got a, you got a big one in it. You, you already done blew out the field. Let's see what the big one is. You say it's a six pounder? Probably. Six pounder? Something. All right, let's see. All right, let's see what you got. 762. You got a 762 big fish. Big as a big old big. That's a big one, dude. Good job. So, Trace. You, my friend, the straight up fishing team shootout champion. Good job today, my man. Thank you. Good job. He talked junk to me all day, made me feel terrible. <laughs> I felt like I gained, I aged about 20 years after the way you talked about me today. All day long, man. I'm proud of you. Proud of every last one of you. Hogan, Bradford, if y'all want to see something like this again, y'all want to do this again? We have to do it somewhere nowhere we've never been before. That's what we need to do. My man, Trace, he brought the heat this week. You got to give it to him. Not only did he catch a seven pounder, the big fish of the tournament, then he went and executed and finished off the rest of the field catching 17 pounds. That's awesome. I gotta give my title away. Trace, you are him. You're him, my man. I'm no longer him, you're him. Trace White came out here and put it on him this week. 17 pounds out here. It was really challenging conditions as well. We had winds, we had clouds, a little bit of rain. Trace, show everybody what you caught all your fish on. I caught them on the Loco Special 110, and I was using a seven foot medium heavy favorite rod. And overall, it was a pretty good day. I really threw this 99% of the day, and I threw top water when I saw fish schooling. So if you were to say one thing that made you lean towards the jerk bait other, over other baits, what would you say that would be? Well, when I saw the fish schooling, I realized that they weren't staying up the whole time. So I knew they were still in the area, but they weren't eating top water. So I needed a suspended bait that would go underwater, but that would also trigger schooling fish. So I just went with the jerk bait. That's awesome, bro. Well, that was a good job picking that out of all those baits that we had in the boxes that we got from Carl's. He picked the jerk bait up. If nothing else, we definitely got to thank Carl's and Mr. Tackle Box for providing the baits for us to fish here at Lake Hartwell. If you need tackle, Carl's Bait and Tackle, that's the place to go to get it. Overall, I feel like this was a fun day. I can tell all the boys had fun. Everybody caught fish. The thing I love about coming to Lake Hartwell is this multi-dimensional. You can catch fish just about doing anything that you want to do. I think everybody had a lot of fun and I'm hoping that everybody learned something more than anything.